Hi and welcome back. In this video, we're going to cover the Qlist featured in the TouchMix 30 Pro firmware version 3.0 or later. Let's get right into it. The Qlist allows you to compile any number of scenes, snapshots, and audio files into a predetermined sequence. Here's where we can start to have some fun. On the Qlist screen, you have an assets window and the Qlist itself. Items from the assets folder can be added to the Qlist while using the green add to Qlist button beneath it. Choose from custom scenes, any saved snapshots, and audio files. To load audio files into the Qlist, the files must be loaded onto the root directory of a USB device, meaning that it cannot be placed in a folder on the drive. And the device must be currently connected to the mixer. Audio files can either be MP3 or WAV files, and the sample rates of these files must match the sample rate setting on the mixer. There are a number of controls on the left side of the list that allow you to manipulate the list itself. You can rearrange the list using the move up and down button to step a selected item either higher or lower in the list. You can use the move to start and end button to quickly snap items to the top or bottom of the list as well. The link button allows you to link two items together so that they are loaded simultaneously. When selected, an item will be linked with the item that is directly below it in the list. Pro tip. If using audio files in the queue list, create a snapshot of the two-track playback channel with all settings optimized for that audio track, then link that snapshot to the audio file. You're welcome. If you want to remove an item from the list, you can do so with the delete button, or you can use the clear all to wipe the list clean and start fresh. Down below, you have the same recall omit options as with scenes. You can save the current queue list and all its settings with the save recall button. To start using the queue list, you can use the buttons located on the right. Or you can press the run button here, which removes the assets window from the screen along with the queue list editing buttons. So you have a nice dedicated screen just for showtime. Operation is pretty simple whether you're in the run screen or the queue list edit screen. Select items from the queue list and use the load selected button to load it. From there, you can use the load next button to continue to load the items in order moving down the list, or select any item and use the load selected button at any time. If a snapshot is selected in the list, you can use the preview button to see an overview of the channels and control parameters included with the snapshot. We can also see the name and description of the snapshot. See? Aren't you glad you put that in there? Similar to snapshots, if you need to alter a queue list at any time, you can do so right from the queue list screen using the update button. The queue list screen is designed to be an optimal workspace that can be used to run an entire event from one screen given the proper preparation and setup. It's good to mention that while snapshots, queue lists, and scenes can operate independently of each other, it's best practices to use snapshots and queue lists in conjunction with scenes. Meaning, it's best to start by creating an overall scene as a starting point and general umbrella for your event. Then create snapshots that are parented by that scene. If creating queue lists, a good idea might be to start the queue list with the scene for that event. It's not a hard rule, as you can recall any snapshot available on the mixer within any available scene. But, depending on what the snapshot does and what controls and parameters it is set up to affect, you might end up with varied results, or you might end up affecting things that you did not intend to within that particular scene. Just something to keep in mind. Once you've got some scenes, snapshots, and cue lists built up, user buttons and or external MIDI devices can be used to recall snapshots, step through snapshots in the snapshot bank, and even advance through events in the queue list, adding another layer of control to these features. To assign user buttons, first navigate to the user button setup screen by pressing the menu button and selecting user buttons on the screen. Choose the specific user button you wish to program using the tabs at the top of the screen. Now using the menu system, we can choose the function we want the button to perform. In the action menu, we'll choose recall snapshot queue. Now in the middle selection window, we have a few options. If we want to recall a snapshot, we can select the user option and any available saved snapshots will appear in the detail menu. If the relative option is selected, you have the ability to program user buttons to recall both previous and next snapshots. So you can use a pair of user buttons to step through snapshots if you want that. In the queue option, you can assign buttons to initiate the current queue list by recalling the first queue as well as the option to recall the next queue in the list. 
To assign any of these options to a button, make your selection in the menu tree, and then press the green Assign button. Confirm the assignment on the following prompt, and you're done. If an external MIDI to USB controller is connected to the mixer, you can set up external control as well. This is very similar to setting up user buttons, and you have the same options available to you. With the device connected to the mixer via USB, open the menu and press MIDI on the screen. You'll notice this screen looks very similar to the user button assignment screen. Choose your MIDI control slot with the tabs at the top. You can program up to eight external MIDI controls. Now use the menu columns to select the control function you want to be performed and assign it to the MIDI slot. Now we have one additional step, which is to pair this control function with the MIDI signal sent by the controller. To do this, we'll press Learn MIDI in the lower right corner, and we'll get a prompt alerting us that the mixer is now waiting for an incoming MIDI signal. Simply press the specific MIDI button on your controller that you want to use for this function, and send the signal to the mixer. Once the signal is received, the mixer will automatically pair it to the control function, and you're all set. Additionally, firmware version 3.0 for the TouchMix 30 Pro has a companion tablet app which introduces the feature of offline editing. We'll go further into detail on that feature in a dedicated video for the app. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.